Hello, beautiful people. I'm Reverend Christina Garza, and thank you for joining our virtual service. We're so excited to have you here with us today as we continue in our Advent series, The Spirit of Christmas. And today we have an inspiring and powerful message by Reverend Kurt Condra and music by the fabulous Megan McDonough. So sit back, relax, open your hearts, open your minds, and allow the spirit just to pour in and out of you. Enjoy. It's the season of light and love. It's the season of Advent, this being the third Sunday at Advent. So I just want to quickly recap um, Unity's understanding of what each of those Sundays represent for us. The first Sunday represents faith and hope. So we're uh, Imagining that this candle was lit so that we might cultivate those qualities, those attributes in our own experience. Because it's, it's, we know that it's by bringing those forth that we prepare our hearts and our minds for the birth of Christ consciousness, for a new awakening of Christ consciousness as we move toward the Christmas season. And, um, you know, I was thinking, th this story is so familiar. We all know the story of Christmas. We know all of the characters. And it can be somewhat rote if we don't bring a new understanding and a new sort of opening to it, a new, a new desire or intention to bringing a greater understanding forth. And so I'm, I'm imagining that there has been so much darkness and literally so much death that much of us have been dealing, many of us have dealt with through these last nine months that I think it's the perfect invitation for us to really engage in this period of Advent, this preparation of mind and heart so that we can really um, experience the birth of Christ and then entirely different, perhaps maybe even more magnified way this year. So faith and hope are a large piece of that. That would have been the first candle. Um, the second candle, which Reverend Christina spoke to last week, would be peace. And what I love about the insights that she brought is that peace is not just about the absence of conflict or of, of dissension, but peace is really about coming from that space within. The peace that surpasses understanding arises from within it within us so that we can be present with a sense of tranquility, with a sense of serenity, even in the midst of sort of the chaos and the darkness that we see around us. So that's a quality that we're working on. And then this week, the theme uh, traditionally is love. And so that's what I'll be speaking to. So I'm lighting this third candle of Advent to represent love that awakens in our hearts as we hold that intention over the course of this next week and the season of light and the season of Advent. Uh, I wanna share with you a quote from Charles Fillmore that kind of set me back on my heels a little bit. I mean, I know you certainly understand that it's true, but in thinking of it, it it's just, it's one of, those, one of those passages that Charles brings forth that really helps us to think through in a deeper way about what's meant by love and the love of God. Um, this is from his book, Jesus Christ Heals. He wrote, God does not love anybody or anything. God is the love in everybody and everything. God is love. We become love by permitting that which God is to find expression in word and act. That, that's a little bit jarring, right? The first time you hear that through, God doesn't love anybody or anything. It's because God is the very essence, the quality, the source of all love that is. And of course, what we in unity understand is that's, that's our, that's, we're created out of that same, that same energy. We are that same love as we align ourselves with it and bring it into deeper expression. And so this week, as I've been contemplating this service, and in fact, I even um, wrote about this in my blog, but I, I sort of set an intention to look for ways in which love has supported me that I might have overlooked, that I might really not have noticed before. And uh, so as I was going about at home, I, I dug out, I normally don't do a lot of decorating for Christmas at home because it's so grand here at church that I feel like I sort of get my decorating fix. But this year, because all of us are spending so much time at home, maybe it's true for you, I'm putting a little bit more effort in it. And so I dug back to the back of my storage locker and, and uncovered these, these Christmas trees that my grandparents had created years and years ago. They had a little ceramic studio in their basement. And my grandpa was always, he was a really quiet man. He didn't say a lot. He was always kind of a steadfast presence in my life, in our lives. But um, it was grandma who was, uh, I, I described her, the word that came to me this week was body. Grandma was vivacious. She was body. She was, uh, 
I was trying to think of a, of, of a Christmas character and I just, she's not Virgin Mary by any stretch that wouldn't characterize grandma. I was thinking maybe Dolly Parton. She's even built like kind of Dolly Parton. She's just this vivacious. So my, my memories of grandma or, or of my grandparents are always dominated by, by images of my grandmother. But this year, as I pulled these Christmas trees out, I, what I recognized is that grandma painted them and grandma was always very, you know, she was the one that was mostly celebrating the gift giving. But it was grandpa who, um, he was downstairs in, in sort of this basement laundry room and he mixed up the clay. He poured it into these forms and molds. He timed how those were going to be dried. He watched carefully to make sure that they wouldn't crack. He drilled the holes. He, he fired them in these kilns that they had. It was grandpa whose efforts largely created these, these beautiful gifts that I'm now remembering and enjoying years and years later. So I posted about that, that different awareness, right? That it's, it's actually grandpa, has, his energy that became this blessing, that this expression of love that I'm experiencing th this, this, this Christmas season, especially. And as I posted that story on my Facebook blog and on the, the blog at church, um, I, I have just been so gratified that it has returned to me by others who have shared memories of either my grandparents or of their own Christmas decorations that they remember from childhood that really bring them into a sense or an energy of that kind of loving presence. And it's just been this beautiful cycle of love that, that I've been to, able to add to my Christmas experience. And so that's really what I want to explore today uh, as we move into this period is look for the places in our lives where we may have overlooked or taken for granted expressions of love that really move us into that alignment with the true source that is. Um, and so I would invite you as, as my talk continues, or maybe you've already got something in mind now, just share those in the chat stream so that others can be part of this really beautiful circle of how love has been expressed in our lives and is expressed in our lives as we move forward. So just, you know, a sentence or two, a word about how love has expressed in your life. And if you haven't already had a memory or if you aren't already mindful of a way in which there's someone in your current experience who's bringing forth that energy, then uh, I wanna share with you maybe three qualities or attributes of love that might help you to identify that experience for you and, and really bring it into uh, sort of fuller awareness so you can uh, fully appreciate it and fully embody it. Um, so these, and these three attributes really come out of, um, one of my favorite Unity authors is Linda Martella Witset and her book, Divine Audacity was basically written as a kind of a, a roadmap through the 12 powers. And I'm gonna share with you the qualities that she expressed as being representative of love or indic indicative of love in our experience. Um, and then the stories of each of those about how, how sort of they've, I've, I've, I understand them to be functioning in my own life. So the first quality that she represents or that she suggests is that we look for um, qualities of magnetizing. Love is a power that draws unto itself. It's um, Charles Fillmore would describe it as even the same power that uh, the, the power of gravity, right? The, the magnetizing forces that keep planets spinning in the, in the cosmos and the, that had the apple fall on Newton's head, right? That same magnetizing power that draws all things to us. That, that's one quality of life. So uh, one quality of love that I would invite you to sort of imagine as you think about your own experiences. Where have you felt this kind of magnetic connection drawing toward? And the interesting thing about Linda Martella Witsett's writing is that she, she suggests that it's not, always, um, it's not always about those warm, fuzzy feelings of attraction that we often think of as love. That there's also sort of love is also evident, that magnetizing power is also evident in the opposite of that right? That there are times in our experience when maybe we're feeling resistant to an experience. And um, she says that deep down underneath, and I totally buy into this, that it is actually a call for love, that, that love is being invoked or called for or drawn to us, both in the experiences where we're feeling warm and fuzzy and, and really um, uh, good positive vibrations about that, but love is also a magnetizing power that's drawing us to those areas where we can be an expression of that love more fully. Um, the example I have is uh, I was, I, I live in a, a building with, there are about 80 units, so there's a lot of neighbors around. And 
Um, not too long ago, before things got too cold, I was taking my bike in and out of my, my apartment. I keep it in my apartment just because I like it to stay clean. And and I was I was loading it onto the elevator there. And one of my neighbors who I'd seen around, don't know her well, still don't know her name, but she reprimanded me because I was apparently using the wrong elevator. We have one elevator that has mirrors and one elevator that's used more for moving and, and move out. And she was sort of dressing me down about having gotten on the wrong elevator. And what I realized is that I, I carried away a kind of resentment about that. I carried that with me. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit how long I carried that with me. But as I sat with it, what I began to recognize is that it really was a call for me to find a space in my heart to be forgiving and extend myself in a different way. And, and as I mentioned, it, was, it didn't come easily, right? So what I noticed is while I had maybe seen this woman, I've lived there 10 years. I had maybe seen this woman a half a dozen times in those 10 years. I swear to you, in the course of the next two weeks, I ran into her everywhere I possibly could, at the mailboxes, in the laundry room, on the elevator. There were all these opportunities where I was magnetized to make sure that that energy had an opportunity to be transformed. And finally, I, I have been able to do that. I can say honestly that now I can greet her in the elevator um, with a sense of warmth and, and real appreciation. And I think we're really beginning to kind of have a, a whole different relationship as neighbors. So love is not only evident in those places where we feel warm and fuzzy and huggy. It's also called for in those places where we're resisting. And I believe that the cosmos is going to magnetize opportunities for us to embody it, just as they did for me in the elevator. So as you're thinking about how it expresses in your own life, um, love as this magnetizing force. Maybe there's a person who you're called to love more deeply or, or to bring into that space of love that is beyond just warm human emotion, but that arises out of that energy, that power that is about magnetism. If there is, like I say, go ahead and share it in the chat stream. The next um, sort of quality or attribute that Linda Martella Witts that suggests is a power or quality of love that, that calls it forth is that of harmony, that of harmonization, that quality that brings into our experience and our expression um, a, a greater alignment with what is, a greater alignment with the truth of our being in peace. And I think I, I wanted to share with you a passage from Matthew. Because I think a lot of times when we think of love, especially in the Christmas stories, the nativity stories, we often think of Mary, right? She is actually giving birth to this divine expression of love. And she's, her soul magnifies the Lord. She just, she approaches it from this place of love from the very beginning that the angel Gabriel reveals to her that she's going to be a channel through which love expresses. But as we look to the book of Matthew, which is really more about Joseph's side, right? The father's side of the story. I think it shows us how this harmonizing power of love gets expressed. Yeah. So I'm just going to read from you the passage um, in Matthew chapter one. It starts at verse 18 and it's a couple of verses, but um, here, here's what it has to say. And what I would invite you into is think about how in Joseph's experience, he was brought from a space of sort of resistant or at least not complete alignment into a space of harmony, harmonization. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. Right? So that's a, that's a form of love, right? He's not, he's not going to disgrace her. But as we read on, there's still some resistance in his heart where he was out of alignment. Just when Joseph had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did this as he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife and named him Jesus. So from this sort of wrestling with how best to show up um, in this situation, this angel, this 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 declaration from on high, this um, you know, we would call that spiritual guidance or this intuitive hit. He got this understanding, this deeper understanding of how he was to play a harmonizing role in the expression of love that was going to be born into the world. 
So I would just invite you to think about where in your own life experience have you encountered some resistance? And where have you been open to divine inspiration, divine guidance, and been able to align more fully with what love would have you bring? And if there's an experience about that that you'd like to share, uh, please do again. Keep it, keep this sort of, keep this beautiful energy of giving and receiving love um, alive in that chat stream. Your story will be an inspiration for others. And then as we move to the last quality uh, or expression of love that Linda Martella Witset describes as a as a, a way to identify how love is showing up in our, in our expression in our lives. Um, she describes it as a unifying power, that love is an energy that brings together those which otherwise might be divided or separated. Uh, I can think of no more needed quality of love in our world right now than that, right? To, to bring together those parts of ourselves or those parts of our culture, or those parts of our society that are feeling somehow divided or separate, that, that that's a beautiful energy that all of us can begin to step into in a greater way. Um, Reverend Christina mentioned that we've based our our Advent series this year on the booklet that's written by, um, or that's published by Unity World Headquarters every year. There's a little Advent sort of booklet that, that you can request online. Um, I was invited to, to um, write the reflections that appeared on the Sundays in this year's Advent book. So um, I've had a little bit of a head start on this, but I'd kind of forgotten, you know, these were submitted way back in the spring. And I'd, when the booklet came out, it was kind of like refreshing to look. Wow, I, I hadn't remembered that that's a piece of it. But one of the passages that I included in the reading for today, this Sunday's reading on love, um, really struck me. Uh, so I'm going to share that with you. Um, I wrote that um, we get to plug into this equation of giving and receiving love from either side of it, right? The instant that we give love selflessly, we receive a sense of peace, harmony, and fullness. Mm -hmm. The flip side is that the instant that we become willing to receive the infinite love of God always pouring out upon us, then we're compelled to give it back. It's in our nature. And this, this notion that like we give and receive graciously really struck me because what I recognize is that... Um, I'm, I'm probably more apt to show up on the giving side of that than I am to really receive fully. Um, maybe you've had that, that, that experience. It's kind of like the same experience I, with the Christmas trees that I described earlier, right? It's like my grandpa's commitment and dedication and his passion poured into that little ceramic Christmas tree. I would take it gr for granted all this time. And yet he had plenty of gifts um, and, and actually... Uh, in a, at a lot of levels and a lot of levels in realms of life, he uh, provided an incredible sense of stability and support that I was taking for granted and hadn't really received. And so I've been been trying to be really mindful of the places in which I've overlooked or not been completely present to the love that supports me, mm -hmm. because I think as I become more fully aware of those it becomes um, just second nature to be able to give that back. Yes? So um, I would say in your own experience, look for the spaces in your heart where this unifying power brings together that which might have felt separate and yet which all the time the spirit and the energy of love was supporting you to experience it in a much greater way. Yeah? So what I'd like to do now is move into a time of meditation. It's patterned after um, really claiming these three qualities of love, this magnetizing, this harmonizing, and these unifying qualities of the divine. But to prepare us for that, I'm going to ask Megan McDonough to please um, um, share with us uh, a bit of music to create the environment and the receptivity. Megan? Happy to, Reverend Kurt. Thank you. That was beautiful. So as we all sort of relax into our bodies and into our space and just breathe.
a space of expansiveness, a space of greater awareness, a space where light and love and peace are fully evident in your experience. It's in these quiet moments of reflection when our connection to the divine is most palpable, when we are most available to spirit's inspiration, to spirit's power. And so as we breathe in, I invite you to call forth the magnetizing power of love. We open ourselves to divine guidance, the divine inspiration, and divine intuition. And we understand that we are being drawn toward that which will bring forth the greatest expressions of love that we're able to bring. Just as a magnet draws forth, we too are magnets for love. And we magnetize ourselves to the experiences, to the situations, to the connections, to the relationships that will allow us to be the very essence and presence of love that is so beautifully expressed in the birth of Jesus. I invite you to breathe in once more deeply and to exhale, and to now turn your awareness to the harmonizing power of God, to know that you indeed are the very presence of the divine which brings forth a greater alignment with that which is in harmony with all that is. Centered in love, you have the power to bring peace where there is discord, to bring wholeness where there is separation and to be light where there is darkness. We breathe in knowing and understanding that truly we are the harmonizing expression of the divine in the world. Once more, I invite you to breathe in deeply into that truth and exhale, knowing that we release it to be brought into fuller expression in our lives. And thirdly, we claim the unifying power of love as part of our own essence as well. That through our capacity to know that there is nothing separate from us, nothing apart from all that is, and to know that through love, we become a channel through which that unity gets expressed more fully, more beautifully, more magnificently. We are, each of us, powerful expressions of love, bringing forth the love of God in greater and deeper and more palpable ways. Breathe in once more, inhale deeply, and exhale as we move into a moment of silence to let these energies, these activities of love take greater shape, greater form, in our own hearts and minds. Know the power of love in the silence.
very gently now, as we bring our time of meditation to a close, I invite you to hold this affirmation in your mind and heart. I give and receive love graciously. I give and receive love graciously. Know this truth as we continue to breathe. to worry if I'm in the flow here in this moment I let go each blade of grass has an angel leaning over whispering grow On behalf of Unity on the North Shore, thank you so much for joining us. We are so grateful for your energy here with us. And please don't forget, like us on our social media channels, subscribe, leave us some messages, make sure you subscribe to our notifications and all that other good stuff. We're so grateful for you. And if you liked what you saw today and want some more, please consider joining us in tithing a love offering to our community to be able to share in this beautiful sacred space. You can send donations to www.unitynns.org or simply text the word GIVE, G-I-V, to 815 827 6052. Many blessings, beautiful people.